good morning. This morning is Mother's Day, and we're glad to welcome all the mothers to our service uh, through the internet. And we're glad that you're able to tune in and listen uh, and uh, join us in worshiping the, the Lord today through his word. And uh, it's a fitting thing that we uh, come together uh, and recognize and celebrate Mother's Day because uh, God established the home uh, by bringing together a mother uh, and a father in the beginning. And the Bible tells us that we ought to honor our mothers and our fathers and that uh, we think about today the love and the sacrifices that uh, mothers put forth every single day in taking care of their children. A lot, of, a lot of times we don't recognize the sacrifices that mothers uh, have to make uh, and the comfort that they have to sacrifice sometimes. But they invest a lot of love into their children. And of course, uh, it's more difficult for some mothers uh, than others because some mothers don't have a father in the home uh, to help. And so uh, we're... we're are uh, really appreciative today as we think about our mothers and the love and sacrifices that they make. Today in our message, we want to introduce you to a mother uh, who was also widowed uh, and uh, comes to us from the Old Testament in 1 Kings chapter 17, verses 8 and 9. And the Bible says there, and the word of the Lord came unto him saying, Arise, get thee to Zarephath, which belongeth to Zidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. And uh, we're introducing you to uh, a mother who had one son at home. Her husband, of course, had died, and she was trying to survive with her son uh, during a famine that was taking place in the land. If you go back to the first verse in chapter 17, uh, we know that we were introduced there to Elijah the prophet, who is sent by God to King Ahab of Israel. And he told King Ahab this message that came to him from God, that there would be no dew nor rain uh, but according to his word in the future. In other words, it's not going to rain anymore until I say so. And I won't say so until God says so. And uh, so then, uh, of course, this uh, sort of ticked off Ahab, king of Israel. And uh, so the Lord sent Elijah down to the brook Cherith down near uh, Jordan, uh, he told him to travel eastward until he got there. And he said, I have commanded the ravens to feed thee while you're there. You can drink from the brook and uh, the ravens will feed you. And so uh, Elijah went down to the book Sheridan and there he was fed morning and evening uh, by the ravens and he drank from the brook. But in the process of time, because there was a drought and a famine, uh, the brook dried up, and then the Lord said to him, Arise and get to Zarephath, where I have commanded a widow woman to sustain thee. And one of the things that I wanted to add here, uh, if you will, is the fact that whenever God cuts off your supply, he will open up another door that will supply you. And this is exactly what he did with Elijah. And uh, of course, this mother uh, living in Zarephath, where Elijah was to go, uh, was having some hard times because of this famine that was taking place. But uh, Elijah followed what the Lord said, and he went to uh, Zarephath and met up with this widow woman, that the Lord had sent him to. And uh, one of the things that we note about this particular woman is that she had a good relationship 
with Almighty God. Uh, God had commanded her, God had talked to her that uh, she was to feed Elijah when he came by there. Now, uh, that's what God said to Elijah, I've commanded a widow woman uh, to feed you. Now, it's a good thing for all mothers to have a relationship with Almighty God. Uh, nothing in the world will help in the times uh, when times get hard, like having a relationship with God. And God always provides what we have need of. In fact, this widow woman had a tremendous relationship with God. Jesus even mentions her in Luke chapter 4. Now, some of the things that we know about her is that she knew the Lord and she communed with God and she knew what God's will was. She knew that God expected her when Elijah came to take care of him uh, and to provide food for him. Uh, she had already been through the school of hard times by losing her husband. And so here she was uh, all by herself uh, raising a son, and then this famine comes along, and she's having all kinds of difficulties, even the difficulty of having enough food for her and her son. And so when Elijah came uh, to Zarephath, he found this woman out gathering up sticks, uh, and she was busy about doing things that mothers do to raise their children. And uh, uh, God always picks somebody that's already busy in order to serve him and do his will. Now, I can remember back many, many years ago in my own mother's life and her relationship with the Lord, uh, my mother was sort of a quiet woman and she didn't get out and shout on the rooftop about her relationship with the Lord, but she knew what the Lord's word said and she could tell you what was right and wrong, and she raised her children uh, to be that way. And, uh, and, and later on, I married a wife that's the same way. Now, one of the things that I remember about my mother and I still enjoy about my wife is that both of them were some of the hard workingest mothers I've ever seen in my life. Uh, and my mother had nine children, and uh, you can't tell me that she didn't work. Uh, she worked hard all of her life. And uh, not only did she work hard raising her children, but she worked hard in, in the fields trying to help make a living at the same time. So I appreciate my mother. Now this woman was a busy mother as well. And uh, when Elijah came, he found her picking up sticks and uh, he said to the woman, he said, I want you to go and fetch me a drink of water because I'm thirsty. And so uh, I'm sure this woman, uh, and I'm paraphrasing what the Bible says a little bit, I'm sure this woman uh, said to herself, well, I'm sure glad he didn't ask for food uh, because we don't have any food uh, in the house. She, had, she was in great distress because uh, things were getting awful bad at her home. In fact, she described her situation in three words, I have not, I have not. Uh, and, and so uh, she went to fetch the water for Elijah and as she was on her way to fetch the water for, for him because he was thirsty, he hollered out to her and said, bring me a morsel of bread uh, in your hand when you come back. And then when she said, uh, as the Lord liveth, I have not. I don't have but a little bit of meal in a barrel, and I don't have but a little bit of oil in a cruise, and I'm going in and, and I'm going to bake a cake for me and my son, and we're going to eat it, and we're going to die. So <laughs> she had a mighty bad situation on hand. And uh, so I know that there are many mothers still, even in our day, that are faced with those same kinds of situations sometimes. I can remember many times when I was growing up that I know things were tight for my mother and father, 
And I know they feared and worried about where in the world they were going to get what they needed in order to make it. But she knows that she's supposed to be doing the will of the Lord and feeding Elijah, but she just can't see how she's going to do that when she has nothing. She was focusing on how little she had. And you know, that, that serves to be one of our problems many times. We focus on how little we have uh, and we fail to focus on how great God is and how big God is and how great his supply can be for us. So she expected the worst, to eat what she had and then die. And of course, uh, that, that's what fear does to us. It robs us of our strength and our confidence and our enthusiasm uh, and it sometimes brings frustration and we get discouraged and we just can't see how we're going to make it. Uh, and it and, and if God wants us to have faith and not fear in our life because fear destroys our faith in the Lord and we have a mighty miracle working God and uh, he can stretch the meal and he can stretch the oil in order to meet this woman's needs. Uh, and we might ask ourselves today, are we being defeated by our fears today? Uh, sure, things are not going good in the world today because of, of a virus, but uh, we don't need to fear that. God is still in control of what's going on in the world today. And God loves us. And when we're faithful to God, God's going to take care of his own. And he can replace our fears with the faith that we need to have. If there's one thing that the cross of Jesus proves to us, it is that God loves every one of us. And the resurrection proves to us that God has the power to be up to any occasion and he can take care of his own. Now here was a mother that's going to find that out and she's going to find out that her faith in God can triumph and bring her victory in any situation. First of all, her faith seems to be dying when she says, I have not. I'm going to eat and die. Uh, but then her faith becomes dynamic when she hears what the prophet of God has to say. First of all, she was fearful. And then she heard the prophet say, fear not. And then she becomes faithful to the Lord. She, she has faith that what the prophet said is going to be true. First of all, she was experiencing misery, but she's about to experience a miracle. And that miracle is going to come from Almighty God, and it's going to be produced by faith in God. She hears the comforting word of the prophet when he said, fear not. And uh, she hears the command that comes from the word of God when Elijah said, I tell you what you do. You don't have any fear, but you go in and you first make me a little cake and you bring it to me. And then you make one for your son and one for yourself. And God is promising you that the meal will not waste and that the crews of oil will not get empty. And he will supply your rain, uh, your needs until the rain comes again and this famine is over. What a mighty promise that is from God. And this woman took hold of faith then and believed what God said. He, she believed what the promise of the word of God was, that it will not fail, that God will do that. Now, I sort of paraphrase this a little bit, and I think what she did, I think she had a little bacon grease and a little meal and she went in and made a piece of lacy edge cornbread and brought to Elijah 
I mean, that's just what I thought. But uh, on second thought, I said, no, it couldn't have been bacon grease because there's no bacon in Israel nowhere. Uh, they don't believe in, uh, in having bacon and pork to eat. Uh, it was more than likely olive oil, but she had a cruise of olive oil and she had a handful of meal and she went in and made first a cake for Elijah, the prophet of God. And Elijah had told her to do that first and then bake for her, her son and for herself. You know, the Bible tells us the same thing in in different words it says but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you isn't that the same thing that Elijah told this woman to do put God first and God's man first there uh, because you've been commanded to feed him and God will see that you get faith uh, fed too now Look what happens. She obeys what the prophet of God said, and God honors her faith. The whole time that Elijah was there, and the whole time that this famine lasted, her meal never gave out, and her oil uh, never gave out, but it was supplied by God the whole time because God honors faith. Folks, God will still honor our faith today. And we need to put the Lord first always in our life. Now that's a hard thing to do. I know when you're going through trouble, it's hard to have faith and not sometimes to get discouraged. But God has made his promise that he will supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And that's God's promise, and God's promises are sure. Uh, and, and faith will still win the victory over fear if we'll place our faith in what God says. And our risen and uh, Lord will meet us where we are and provide for our needs every time. His grace is always sufficient. And every mother today needs to realize that God's grace is sufficient for them and for their needs. God takes care of mothers and others. That's a good way to put it. He'll take care of all of us that serve him faithfully. And so this mother found out how God could work even a miracle in her life because of the faith that she had in him. Folks, do you have faith today in God? Mothers, think about your faith in the Lord and how you trust the Lord. Many times you've run through troubled times and you know you've had to trust the Lord to make it through. And I say to you today, if you're one out there that does not trust the Lord, you need to open up your heart and you need to let God come in. You need to let God take control of your life for there's nobody to control it any better than God can. All the plans that we can make are not as good as God's plan. I say to you today, let the Lord come in and Lord, let the Lord have his way in your life and you'll never be sorry that you did. And all the others out there beside of our mothers, let's think about our relationship with Almighty God today. What is it like? Are we as close to the Lord today as we ought to be? If there's one thing to trouble in the world, ought to have said to us today and ought to have made us mindful of today is that God loves us <coughs> and God cares. Let us pray. Father, again, we're thankful for your blessings. 
We pray your blessings upon every mother today, Lord. Many of them are suffering. We pray that you comfort them. Many of them, Lord, are afraid. And we pray that you'd give them courage. Many of them are weak, and we pray, Lord, that you'd give them your strength. And God, just help all of those that are going through suffering today. Bless all, Lord, that have lost loved ones. And God, help us always to look to you. Help us, Lord, to always have faith that you're in control and that you're our Lord and you're our God. In the name of Christ, amen. Amen. Thank you.